Okay, so uh, now we will discuss about the boundaries in a single phase solids. So, we have only discussed boundaries between solid and vapor. Remember, I am skipping the boundaries between solid and liquid, which I will discuss in solidification. So, now I am going to discuss boundary between solids, solid single phase solids, or let us assume that the gain boundaries. So, there are different types of boundaries we will consider, but we will not be able to deal all of them today low angle, high angle boundaries, special gain boundaries and there are other things like equilibrium and polycrystalline material. If you have polycrystal then what will happen? Polycrystal is a mixture of all kinds of boundaries. Now, uh, well before I deal with, let me see what is, what is basically if you consider a single copper suppose you have a copper and uh, there are many grains. So, that means each grain has same chemistry only consists of copper atoms. Difference between the two grains is what? Orientations. One grain is oriented in one way, other grain is oriented in other way. That is why the boundary between the two grains will have orientation change. So, nature of any boundary depends on the most misorientation of the two adjoining grains. That is what has been, that is what exactly I told you. Basically, <coughs> if I a single grain says a grain is a single crystal, let us assume that. Now, single crystal of one grain in touch with a single crystal of single crystal on the other side of, of a grain. Okay. This is one grain, this is in touch with another grain, okay. you can see here. Their orientations are different. So, that means, nature of this boundary depends upon the misorientations of these two grains, nothing else other than that will matter to them. So, how can I create that? I can create in many ways this misorientations, okay. but we are going to deal with only two simple cases. Remember that. There are many ways you can do this misorientations between the two grains, but we are going to deal with only two simple cases and these two simple cases are enough for your understanding for the material science uh, phase transformations. One is a till boundary. Okay. So, what is important? Suppose I have a grain on the left side which is shown as a block like cube and I have a grain on the right side and they are oriented differently. That is what is shown here one grain is looking like this way, other grain is looking like other way and I want to bring them together and form a boundary. So, what I can do? I can actually tilt one with respect to other to have a coincidence and this tilt boundary occurs whenever the axis of rotation, axis of rotation means you see here this is what is how it is rotated. So, if these two are the same, uh, these two have been like this and like this, okay, the same orientations, but they are not same. So, what will happen? Okay, or let me draw it in a different way, maybe it is not visible. If these two are same, okay, one is like this, other one is like this, then we do not call this as a boundary because they are the same orientations. Okay. Only when one guy is like this, other guy is like that, then they are in different orientations. Okay. So, if this is the two orientations of the grains and I want to bring them to boundary, what I can do? I can actually tilt this one, this primary one along this axis tilt to bring it to the same of that on the right side one and that is the tilt happens along a common axis of the two and this common axis is this one which is shown here, this one is the common axis and this tilt is given by theta, okay, it is just like tilted by amount theta. You have two cubes, one cube is tilted with respect to other by theta, that is that is what is tilting. And this this is I know is very not easy to understand. Basically, what I have two separate grains, they are all single crystal growing in a different way, and they are coming together. And that is how the boundary is forming. When they come together form a boundary, in order to have a coincidence of the atoms, otherwise bonds will be remain all unbroken, that is not possible because bond has to be, you know bonds has to be matched little bit, otherwise energy will be very high. To do that, you can actually tilt the atoms or planes actually in one of the crystal, so that it atoms on this boundary falls on the other crystal, that is what is a tilt boundary. And to do that, we need to have a tilting of one of these crystals 
with the common axis parallel to the common axis. So, this is a common axis we have tilted parallel to the common axis ok that is what is known as a tilt axis tilt gain boundary. Now, twist one is same thing, but you know twisting is what twisting is something like this way ok this is the way of twisting. So, rotation axis is per perpendicular to the boundary that means what I am twisting one crystal to the other in such way the rotation axis axis along the rotation things are this is our rotation axis uh, that is actually perpendicular to the plane of the boundary. Here the plane of the boundary are remaining constant as the axis rotation axis was parallel to that, but here rotation axis is perpendicular this is the rotation axis you can see that is the perpendicular to the boundary ok. So, that is the major difference between a twist and the tilt boundary and these are all seen most of the boundaries in the in the in the crystal you see are mixture of these two. So, when you tilt and twist you you are basically creating what creating deformations or you are deforming distorting this this atoms actually and distortion is done by dislocations as you know basically whether you tilt or twist whether you tilt it this way that way or you are twisting it if you will twist this plane this way what you are doing you are deforming it basically. If you take a rod and try to twist it or you try to tilt it this way what you are doing you are you are making the atoms deform basically we are making the atoms move actually and this uh, displacement of atom is defined by dislocations we know that and dislocations actually characterized by the dislocation means the displacement of a dislocation characterized by what is known as a Barger vector you know Barger vector is basically well defined you all should know that this is nothing but what if I draw a Barger circuit the failure of closure of the Barger circuit is what is known as a Barger vector ok that is what is shown here ok you see in a in a perfect crystal right there is no dislocation there is no extra plane that there is no failure of the closure. But if when you have a dislocation which is sitting here there is a dislocation and if I if I start from here move like this move like this move like this there is a closure here ok that is what it and this is the closure failure that closure barrier is what is known as the Barger vector ok. Direction of that tells you the direction of the vector and the magnitude or value of that tells you the value of the Barger vector. This is very important in a three dimensional space that means, you can either have a you know in screw dislocation case you can see this is a perfect crystal there is no closure problem, but in a, in a screw dislocated place there is a closure problem here ok. You go you can start from here then go there again go there go there go there go there, but the moment you reach there you cannot reach here. So, there is a closer problem that is what is your Barger vector in a screw dislocation. I hope because in a in a in a what is called normal dislocation that is what is your edge dislocation that is what I shown you here this is your edge dislocation this is very easy to understand. So, screw is little bit difficult that is what I want to discuss. Now, uh, people actually most of the scientists they have actually uh, discussed that I can consider the till boundary ok or twist even till boundary easy to understand two types one is called low angle other one is a high angle boundary. Low angle means the theta which we have tilted ok if you go back that here theta by which you have tilted is very small high angle means theta is large we will define the theta small and high very soon what is the high and low values. Okay. We can uh, assume that basically Reed and others W D Reed and others they have actually considered that a low angle grid boundary where the tilting angle is very small can be considered to be to be consisting on of array of parallel edge dislocations. Whereas, a twist boundary is a cross grid of two sets of crude dislocations ok. Uh, we will we'll come back to those figures which is taken for from the book. Uh, let us consider the tilt boundary, tilt boundary is very easy to understand I hope it is there is a picture there yes. On your left side you see consider this first one do not look at the right side ok. First you look at your left side you see there are two crystals and their misorientations are actually theta and I have to put them together to form a boundary. And they are tilted already by certain angle theta. If I put them together what I form is nothing but array of dislocations 1, 2, 3 correct that is what is basically a small angle tilt boundary looks like 
this is what W T Reed and others have thought about it, very easy to understand. Now, few things you have to understand very clearly. If I do that, okay, now energy of the low angle boundary is the total energy of dislocations, nothing but dislocation energies, correct. Before I go that, let me see each case atoms in the region between the dislocation fit almost perfectly in the both adjoining crystal, where dislocation cores are regions of poor fit in which crystals structure highly distorted. What is the meaning of that? It says, you know, most of the part crystal is fit nicely, here crystal fits nicely, see the bonds are very nicely not broken, not even distorted here also, okay. Similarly, here, there, here, here, everywhere, okay, here. Only in the core of the dislocation, it is a little bit distorted. Bonds are broken and also distorted. You see a distortion here. This is the core distortion. Bonds are distorted, bent. That is what it says, right. So, that means basically energy of this boundary is nothing but core energy of dislocations, correct. That is one thing you must take care from this lecture, one thing that energy of the low angle gain boundary is nothing but energy distortion energy of the core of dislocations, because if we assume that dislocation the gain boundary is consisting of parallel row of dislocations. Second thing is that if I increase the theta, what will happen? If I increase keep on increase the theta that means this angle, I have to put more and more number of dislocations, you remember the, the, the planes will go, the atomic planes will go further away as you increase the theta theta increase means you are put, taking this is a theta initially then you are taking so you see they are going away. So, more and more dislocation needs to be placed along the boundary. Now, how many dislocation you can put it that depends on dislocation will interact, dislocation cores will try interact. You know once a time will come or the situation will come in which core of each dislocation will try to overlap on each other. In such a situation you cannot accommodate any more dislocations. Uh, that is the maximum value of theta which we can have in a low angle gain boundary. Because the moment core of our dislocations fall on each other, that means the whole boundary is distorted. Because every bond will be distorted. That is that is why the energy of the, of the uh, energy of the boundary will be very high. So, there is a limitation of value of theta and that value is normally 10 to 12 or 10 to 15 degrees. That is what tilting you can do. If you tilt more than that, then it becomes a different different thing, different situation that is called high angle, high angle gain boundaries which we will discuss later. But for the sake of your understanding for a small angle gain boundaries you cannot have theta more than 15 degrees. That is so whenever you do experiments and you characterize gain boundaries you always measure what is the misorientations. If it is less than 15 degrees you call it a low angle gain boundaries, if it is more than 15 degrees you call it a high angle gain boundaries that is the way we define things. So, if I go back a little bit here that is one another one thing. Second thing is that energy of low angle gain boundaries I told you is nothing but total energy of the dislocations. Now, it depends on the spacing of dislocations as you see from this picture if this is the Barger factor, this is your distance between the two dislocations and this is the angle theta then is B is nothing but D sin theta or rather distance between the two dislocations is B by sin theta. Theta is small obviously, it is not as small as we can think of it then it is B by theta where theta is in radian. Okay, so, therefore, if I know the misorientations and if I know the buzzer vector in the crystal that is well known for a FCC crystal is a by 2 1 1 0 okay, if where a is the lattice parameter. So, therefore, b is nothing but a square by within root a square by 2 1 plus 1 okay. so, that is nothing but is what happens it becomes a by square by 2 4 1 square plus 1 square. So, this become a by root 2 that is the buzzer vector and if you know the theta let us suppose theta is 5 degrees that is the convert in radian you get the di 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 distance between two dislocations. So, gain boundary energy is a simple or uh, for the tilted image approximately proportional to the density of dislocation in the boundary. Okay. More number of dislocations higher is the energy more is the distortion. Okay. So, that means, it is inversely proportional to the distance more the number distance is smaller. So, that means, it is proportional to theta. So, gamma is nothing but proportional to theta again you see in the normal crystal surfaces which is between solid and vapor the gamma was a function of theta, theta was the orientation of these boundaries with respect to the crystal here theta is a tilting angle. So, therefore, gamma is proportional to theta. 
which is angular misorientation across the boundary. That is very clear and understandable. Now, what happens to the twist? Twist boundary as I said here, you can go back. Twist boundary is nothing but cross key of two sets of crude dis screw dislocation. What is it? Let us see here. You see here this is twist boundary. You have twisted one crystal with respect to other. Okay. So, because of that what you have formed a large number of screw dislocations, no longer edge screw dislocations because if you look at a screw dislocation from the top, they look like a screw. You see from this, this you see there is a screw here, there is a right handed screw, you have distorted the screw. Okay. So, this boundary is nothing but a cross of the two sets of screw dislocation, one set is shown by this solid, other set is shown by the dotted lines. Okay. That is what you see and, uh, and, and that is little bit difficult to understand that is why the experimental work on twist boundaries is very less. Most of the experimental research has been done on till boundaries and luckily uh, many of these good boundaries actually till boundaries in the actually experiments and therefore, it is easy to understand why they actually they are tilled because till boundaries are much easy to form than the twist. Screw dislocations are actually little cause more distortions compared to edge dis dislocations and that is why they are much less. But as I said correctly in the some time back most of the boundaries are mixture between screw, uh, the, uh, the, the tilt and twist. So, that is why analysis becomes little bit difficult. Okay, now, uh, as you see so gamma is nothing but a function of theta the tilt boundaries correct. So, if you clearly see uh, when the angle is very low number of dislocation is also low, the gamma is low. Okay, when the angle increases, gamma slowly increases, but after 10 to 15 degrees gamma tapers off. Why? As I said you after 10 to 15 degrees you cannot put more number of dislocations, dislocation scores have overlapped. So, remember if dislocation score overlap what will happen? If dislocations are different type of nature suppose one is positive one is negative, they will try to cancel each other other 10 fields. And because of that energy of the system will, will be reduced or the slope of the curve will slowly reduce. That is what I see it becomes it slowly tapers off as from this point onwards it is slowly tapering off. That is mainly because of this overlap of these dislocation codes and because of overlap of dislocation codes uh, sometimes they will cancel each other and they cancel each other means therefore, the strain field will reduce and the strain energy reduces gamma energy interface energy or gain bound will reduce. Okay. So, most of the atom fits very well between the lattices. So, there is very little volume free volume and interatomic bonds are highly distorted in a low angle gain boundary correct and I that is what we marked these 10 to 15 degrees high angle gain boundary because we cannot put more number of dislocations into the boundary that is where that they will start overlapping and they will start cancelling each other strain field. So, therefore, we cannot no longer consider a high angle gain boundary to be consisting of array of dislocations. That is that assumptions which W T Reed and others have done will not be valid when you have a theta more than 10 to 15 degrees. That is the uh, another important aspects. Okay. Now, you know I consider tilt boundaries uh, okay, that is what I am showing you here tilt boundary need not be symmetrical with respect to the adjoining crystals that is what you always think it can be angle also this unsymmetrical with respect dislocations with different buzzer vectors you see here the buzzer vector is different here than here. Okay. This is one type this is another type this is a one type this is another type. So, in actual crystal this is what will happen never it will be like a uh, you know straight line and also symmetrical and all the dislocation will arrange one after another they can be in a ang at an angle and therefore, uh, you know that is what is say different by the factors are required to accommodate the misfits because misfits may be different at locally and that can be accommodated by putting dislocations of different buzzer factors. And you know that is only possible in crystals which have which can allow you to produce different buzzer factors not in many crystals it is not possible. Okay, uh, when theta that is what again I am telling you when theta exceeds more than 10 to 15 degrees dislocation spacing are so small dislocation scores overlap it is impossible to physically identif identify the individual dislocations that is what you see here it is not possible. At this stage gain bound is almost independent of misorientations gain bound energy basically gamma is independent of theta. So, when theta is more than 10 to 15 degrees boundary is a nothing but a random high angle gain boundary 
you can no longer consider to be a consisting of array of dislocations. This is a raft model which people use to uh, describe as you see if it is a high angle then number of number of you know misjointed places are very large it is a low angle then it is possible to consider that way. So, one can actually visualize the gain boundaries using a, using a so bubbles wrapped up so bubble models. So, let us stop it here uh, because I will start I will discuss high angle gain boundaries other things now that is what is the next ok. So, and then boundary values and other things we will do it next class and we will discuss about these uh, special high angle gain boundaries because high angle gain boundaries are very difficult to understand we can only consider special boundaries which are easy to understand and the special boundaries are called sigma boundaries or coherent boundaries which we will see later on in the next class ok.